Hello there. Well, hello to you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And how are you? Yes, I'm very, very well indeed. Thank you very much. This is obviously the, the modern way to conduct interviews nowadays, anyway. It, I, it is, but I both fear it and welcome it. It uh, saves me a taxi journey in, in, the, in the rain, um, but on the other hand, it does also mean that I don't see you face to face. Well, I do see you face to face, but not real face to real face. Um, apologies for my not very interesting background, but I have just come off air on Smooth. And so usually you would see my sofa, my wall and a lovely background. Right. You have, but today you just get wall of building in office. <laughs> well, it's fine. You no need to apologise. Yours is much better, though. And I've got to say, look at this. Look at your bookshelf behind you. They're just filled with your books. And there's another one now. Yeah, there's another one. Exactly. <laughs> I am so excited about this. I've just got this, Stephen. Oh, and I am yes. so excited because I one of the reasons I studied Latin at university was because of stories like this. Uh -huh. And I was desperate to read like the Iliad and the Odyssey and, and yeah. books like that. But how does your take differ? Well, um, I wanted it to tell the story of Troy that, um, for someone who'd never read it before. Uh, so um, the build up to it, the causes of it, you know, all the little stories, the little side stories and so on, I was very keen on. Um, and also, of course, the Iliad is only, don't forget, a few days. It's only um, a particular moment in the last year of the uh, uh, of the Trojan War, it doesn't it doesn't cover the judgment of Paris and the birth of Achilles and the marriage of Achilles' parents, you know, and all these the, the famous moments of the the golden apple and all these wonderful things that lead up to the war, the birth of Paris and the judgment of Paris and so on. So so there's a lot um, there's a lot there that comes from other sources other than Homer to try and give a whole picture of this extraordinary. 10 year siege of Troy and uh, so I guess when you were preparing for this you have to become a bit of a historian and spend yes. a lot of time kind of looking through the archives of all the books and information out there that's right I mean one of the funny things about it of course is that the the the, the Trojan War if it happened uh happened um before writing or at least between writing if it as it were it's quite hard to tell exactly but but certainly um uh it means there are no historical archives about the Trojan War because Homer was 400 or so years after it. So he, you know, he was as far away from the war as we are from Shakespeare. You know, it, it's, um, and he didn't write as far as we know, we're pretty sure he didn't. So it was a different, a different way of telling, telling how it happened. It was, it had been passed on by word of mouth for generation after generation after generation. They told the story and in telling it, they'd refined it and made it, you know, made it kind of art shaped as it were, you know, given it a, a kind of drama um, and, and a poetry as well, because the only way you can reliably remember a long, long story like the, the, the story of the siege of Troy would be using kind of uh, little phrases and rhythms that stick in the mind and, and hence, hence poetry really. That's, that's how in each night, the rhapsode as they were called, it's rather a nice name, isn't it? We get our word rhapsody from it, rhapsodic. You know? The rhapsode would, would, would tell would you know sit around a fire or around a table everyone would have eaten and drunk and he, he, just as you have music at the end of a party and you know these days um, someone might pick up a guitar he would pick up a lyre or some musical instrument and he would say I'll tell you this story of the of Troy and he'd, he'd tell one part of it perhaps and then another part the next night uh, and that, that would be the equivalent of binging on it as it were you know or, or, or playing having a different episode each evening and um, and be because that's its nature, it it had time over the centuries to become something truly remarkable as a story. It's a story about all of us. I think that's what I love about it. Um, I mean, it's true of Greek myth generally. I think that the twelve Olympian gods are twelve different sides. To, to humanity, you know, we all have a bit of Apollo and a bit of Dionysus and a bit of Hermes and a bit of Zeus in us. Um, and also we, in terms of the, this extraordinary story of the Trojan War, we, we you know, it starts when young Paris is, is made to really, to, to judge between the three goddesses, Hera, Athena and Aphrodite, um, who, who 
they, they want this golden apple that was rolled at this wedding feast and it, it has to the fairest written on it and they each think they're the most beautiful goddess and they decide that Paris this who's a shepherd boy on a, on a mountainside he doesn't know that he's actually from the Trojan royal family but that's another side to it all but he he has to judge he has to give the apple to one of these goddesses and that subject the judgment of Paris has obviously been very, very popular for painters over hundreds of years. Yeah. Rubens and all kinds. Cranach alone did, I think, about 20 judgments of Paris. Because he, 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 one of the goddesses here is the queen of heaven, and she's a goddess of power and matrimony and order. And she says to him, if you give me the apple, I will give you power and sovereignty over, over all people. You will be an emperor. You will be the most powerful man in the world. He wants to give her the apple, but he thinks he better hear the other two. And then Athena, the goddess of wisdom, says, you give me the apple, I'll give you something worth much more than power. I'll give you wisdom, knowledge of the hearts of men and women, and understanding. Knowledge is greater than power. You know, the power of the mind shatters the greatest spear. And he thinks, oh, I've got to give it to her. And then Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, says, well, I don't have anything grand to offer you. Have a look at this and she hands him a scallop shell and he opens it and there's a picture of a face so beautiful his heart leaps to his throat he can barely breathe who is that her name is helen oh, give me the, the apple the launches a thousand ships give me the apple and i'll give you helen so he gives her the apple the other two goddesses are furious of course and they're they declare war on on troy which is where he's from from then on because he's dared to give the apple to Aphrodite, but she protects him. Anyway, that's oh, that's, well, that's what this. starts it all. It's such a great story. story, isn't it? And it's full of little stories like that. It's because you think of it, it's like, oh, it's a Trojan War. It's all going to be battles and sieges and you know manly stuff. But actually, it's full of these wonderful little kind of fairy tales, these fables, these. Uh, you know, there's you know, there's so much room for comedy in there as well. I mean, if you if you're thinking like all the times, for instance, you did you know, Blackadder for the, for the yes. years. Why have they never themed it on ancient Greece? <laughs> That's an interesting point. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's full of, it is full of those kind of large characters. I mean, in a sense, um, almost every story we ever tell is based on a Roman or a Greek story. I, I, I was thinking the, the, the other day, when you look at, um, you look at, say, The Godfather, is, you know, it's, had a, an anniversary recently, and of course it will always be one of the great classic movies and The Godfather too. When you look at that, that's really, it's a story of Roman emperors. It's a story of power and, you know, vanity and greed and violence and all the things you get in, in these in themes, classic stories. These yeah, themes exactly. never go away, do they? They're they there. don't. They They're don't. always there. How can I ask you, I mean, this is, by the way, the, the third book in your series. Are there more mm. to come? There will be one more, which will be the story of them all coming home after the war. The Odyssey, as it's called, the story of Odysseus coming home. It takes him 10 years to get home. And he has a series of adventures on all these islands as he as he finds to, he finds his way home. So would it be fair to say that during lockdown, when, you know, people have been doing different things in 2020, you have actually been very busy with your head down writing another book? Or is that one done already? It was done nearly finished completely by the time lockdown started, but I have been writing and and um, also uh, I've been recording. I have a little audio booth that just about sort of fits in my house. And uh, so I've been doing audio books and uh, uh, voices for documentaries and animation and stuff like that, because that's something I can fortunately do uh, in lockdown without having to you know because so many of the acting things that I do you, you know, have been obviously compromised by this whole business though that's starting I in theory should be filming in the new year on um, the Stephen I have looked on the ever reliable IMDB yeah. all the films that you have oh my goodness I have you filmed all the movies they've announced on there I mean if if you haven't filmed them you're working from 2021 to 2026 without a break <laughs> Tell me about it. I know it's a bit nutty. I mean, as, as people will know if they look at IMDb, a lot of projects that are in the air stay in the air. But but uh, yeah, they're, they're, I've got plenty to keep me going. I'm very fortunate. Much you know, much luckier than so many other actors. Especially, I mean, I've got friends who are you know in, in musicals and things in the West 
and and had you know based their mortgages on 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 the fact that they were in for a, a fair old time in the in these shows and suddenly they're absolutely stranded like a like a beached dolphin you know suddenly gasping for 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 sustenance and for for life it's a it's a grim business and of course you know over the years you know, people mock actors love is you know so full of themselves but you know they they have a right to earn a living as much as everyone else does and I'm not saying that their tragedy is any greater than anybody else's tragedy who's 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 lost a job but um it, it's it's a real a real issue there's there's a it's I don't know, I, I don't know about you but uh, every morning I sort of lean over for a phone or a, or a tablet or something and I and I look at the headlines while I've been asleep and I wish I hadn't yeah. why do I keep doing it every morning I wake up with a feeling like hot lead leaking into my stomach as I think that it's it's even worse today than it was yesterday and it'll be even worse tomorrow and where's an end to it I mean I know it I do yeah. think, and, and this is, you know, to bring us back to the Greek myths, it's one of the things that makes the myths endure is that the, the human spirit has never changed, really, not since we were able to communicate, not since, not for 50,000 years at least, you know, and probably much, much longer. We've been the same species with the same hopes and the same yearnings and the same, the same mixed need to be social, to you know, to be part of a group and a tribe and a clan and a society, but also to be individual. And to, uh, it's that sort of mixture that uh, uh, is so essential to, to who we are, I think. And uh, I, so no, I agree. You know, I say that actually in, in, in this year, which has been very unsettling for, for most mm. of us, um, that music actually has been a huge help. And so, I mean, I work on smooth radio and uh, the music we play is, you know, known to be relaxing and trying to be uplifting as well. And in mm. fact, do you ever listen to music to help with you? All the time, yes. Music is so important. Uh, um, you know, it, it's its healing power has been you know, written about and thought about a lot. And it's a mysterious thing, music. It speaks to, to deeps within one that nothing else can quite address. And it's partly because music is about nothing, it means it can be about everything. It doesn't, you know, it's not like a picture where you say that's a house. It's abstract in, in the sound and the effect it has on you. And yet that somehow makes it all the deeper. Um, and it, it, it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be a symphony by Shostakovich or, or, or an opera by Verdi. It can it can be a, uh, it can be a, a pop song. It can be. The, I hear I hear you have a guilty pleasure of ABBA as well. Uh, yes, I do love ABBA. <laughs> I have we lots play, of. We play pleasure. ABBA quite a lot on um, on smooth. But tell me what your favorite song is, and I'll make sure it's playing next time. I'm, I'm on <laughs> It's probably Dancing Queen in the end. That's the one that always makes me tap my feet most. I think. Yeah, you need to get if you ever have space. You need to get in on Mamma Mia three. I think that would be perfect. <laughs> you haven't heard me sing. You think Pierce Brosnan had trouble? Whoa! <laughs> It'd be great, though. I think. Jeez. In terms of um, in terms of the acting, I know we've discussed it being difficult, and it is. I mean, for anyone starting out mm. as an actor, actually, it's a really difficult career to be successful. Very few actors manage to make it to where you have been. I mean, you you're very busy. You've had a very successful career. And I was just thinking, how long has it been since Jeeves and Worcester? And it was actually, was it 30th anniversary this year? I think it must have been, yes, that's right. It must have been 90s, yeah, 1990, 100. Yes, that's 30 years, good gracious. It, it's, it, I mean, it's incredible. But I mean, obviously you and Hugh Laurie had a, a tremendous working partnership. Do yeah. you... Do you ever do you keep up? Do you keep up with each other? Do you? Oh, very much so. Yes, I'm. I'm godfather to his children, and uh, uh, I'm always in touch with him. And uh, yeah, I've just been uh, mocking him for his politician uh, in a series of messages. We're not mocking him, congratulating him. His performance is fabulous in Roadkill, but yeah. I've been saying it suits him slightly too well. He's all it's sort of too convincing as this rat of a politician. But uh, yeah, no, I'm. I'm. You know, he's my best friend. Really. Really, and, and he's a great man and uh, um, we had such a, a wonderful time from university onwards really and we're very lucky to have met each other I think and certainly um, uh, we, we had such joy doing comedy together and, and, and the P.G. Woodhouse you know. So, so if you do have so much joy working together surely there's got to be an opportunity. To do that again. <laughs> we talk about it you know I mean I think the thing about certainly about the comedy side of things is that when you do sketch comedy it's 
it's kind of like being at school doing impressions of your teachers, you know? Uh, and so for things like Blackadder or, or, or Sketch Show, if, if you play a general and, and you're in your 20s, as I was, it's kind of funny because you're, you're like a child putting on whiskers and pretending to be a grown up. But when you're actually an age that a general could be, or a judge or a bishop or a figure of authority, then it's a different sort of comedy. Then it's it's kind of character acting. It's it's but it it loses some of that cheekiness that you get from young person's comedy. And so I think that sort of thing is is very much a, a, a young performer's game. But uh, yeah, no, we talk about it a lot, but yeah. we 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 also enjoy doing our own things. And you know, fair enough. I'll I'll let you let you have that one then. Okay. And. <laughs> um, Obviously, as well, I mean, television is now where a lot of people are focusing their careers. And I mean, in America, it seems like every Hollywood actor wants to be in a long running television series. Yep. Hugh, Hugh Laurie, for goodness sake, he was yes, in House Laurie. for years Absolutely. and years and years. Um, and Hugh Grant has just appeared in, in a TV uh, series as well, isn't he? In yeah. TV, yeah. Is yeah. that something that you would like to do, like a, a series like that? Um, Yes and no. I mean, I, I, I'm i such a dilettante, such a little, you know, a, a, a butterfly. I like, um, I like going from flower to flower and stopping and sipping and then moving on to another flower. So I, I'm not sure that I want to get completely locked, locked into. I mean, as, as Hugh sometimes says ruefully, uh, he, he, he did house for longer than it takes to learn to be a doctor. He actually took more years doing house than a medical student from the beginning of the very first uh, anatomy lecture to the to them being able to call themselves a doctor. And, and I'm not sure that I, I could quite have the patience to stay with one thing like that, which is probably a failing on my part. But but I, you know, I enjoy, what I really enjoy is the privilege of being able to do lots of different things. So going from writing a book like like this, Troy, or uh, as I do a lot at, uh, at home, doing audiobooks, um, sitting in you know my little booth and, and reading out stories is fun. And then doing a little bit more writing and then doing um, do, do, then doing some some acting, some <laughs> some pretend. Um, well, look, Stephen, thank you so much. Before I leave, I just want to say, you know, it's obviously been an unsettling year for many this year. I know last year was a, a challenging year for you as well with them. Um, um, health issues and whatnot. Mm. Is, are you good? Is everything all right Fortunately, now? Fortunately, yes. The, the the prostate cancer that I had was was dealt with. Well, the prostate was taken out, which is one way of dealing with it. But you also have to hope there's nothing left behind. So I had a course in earlier in this year of radiotherapy to clear up any lingering cells. But you have to keep getting tested for for quite a few years to check that nothing's come back. But so far, I'm touch wood. I'm being very healthy and very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Um, Stephen Fry, thank you so, so much. And uh, yeah, can't wait to start reading this one. Thank you. Thank you.